Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Haley, and today I am going to do my February reading wrap up. This month I actually got through 10 books and overall I I really enjoyed a lot of these. So I am excited to tell you guys which ones are worth the read and which ones are probably a skip. <laughs> I am just going to dive in. I'm just picking from the stack, so no particular order here. But the first one we are starting off with is Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. And I just was immediately drawn to this cover. I think that it looks very cute for like a creepy <laughs> vibe. This book was described as perfect for fans of Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House, as well as HBO's true crime masterpiece, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. So I felt like this one was promising and even like a few chapters in i was like okay the writing was intriguing but also like bizarrely vague like halfway through this book i'm like i don't have a clue to what is going on in this story the main character is a serial killer's daughter and she is home for the first time in years because her mother is on her deathbed so she's kind of just doing the ins and outs before she bites the dust. <laughs> There's a lot of weird things going on in this house. She's finding notes or excerpts from her father's journal in random places around the house. There's like very strange night terrors and she's unsure, are these real? Are these my dreams? Like what is going on here? It felt very paranormally, paranormally? For a big chunk of the book, but the ending here, which by the way, when I got to the very end of the book, I still had no idea what was going on nor did i know what the hell just happened when i finished it overall i would have to say that this book was just not for me i didn't understand it i didn't feel satisfied with the ending if you have read this book though i am very interested to hear your thoughts if i'm missing out on something here so interested to hear what you guys think but it was not a favorite of mine from this month however the next book that i have is by alice feeney this is his and hers and this one was one of my favorites from the month so this was this was really good. Alice Feeney has a way of keeping you on your toes throughout the entire novel. It's always like a case of like who done it and throughout the book you are just changing your mind every five seconds like I know who did it this time. No, 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 no. Changing my mind. This is who did it. Every time I get to the end I'm like that was that was not what I was thinking. <laughs> Anyways, this was a very fun mystery thriller. There is a murder in this book, and first on the scene is Anna Andrews, who is a news reporter, as well as Detective Jack Harper. But quickly, both of those two become very suspicious and suspects. This book was an absolute roller coaster and so much fun to read. I did end up giving this one four stars. I loved it. I did finally get around to reading my year of rest and relaxation this month and I know there's a lot of mixed reviews on this book but I loved the writing of this book and at times it was a little bit too relatable for comfort but the main character is severely depressed and her plan is to just sleep the entire year. So a lot of the chapters are pretty repetitive, I will give you that. I found the writing incredibly funny. The characters are just ridiculous. It's one of those where you're not really like loving anyone in the book. This was a very interesting read and if you have struggled with mental health issues, specifically depression, you might find yourself relating to quite a bit of what the main character is going through here. I cannot relate to sleeping the entire year off, but wanting to. <laughs> Coffee break. That is so delicious. Next, I have A Hundred Other Girls by Aman Harari Kia. And this is one that I was really excited for because it was described as like a modern Devil Wears Prada. And it definitely has the vibe, maybe, of the Devil Wears Prada, but in a very yesified sort of way. I saw this review on Goodreads and I have to read it because it was perfect. This review just cracked me up, but this is by Alicia. OMG, this book is so yes, slay, TikTok, metaverse, hashtag boss babe, Netflix, euphoria, season two, she in glossier. The constant name dropping and sandwiching of modern things irked me to no end. It genuinely felt like the author just googled trending things and tried to shove every single word in. 
I still can't tell if this is satire. Truly could not have said it better myself. This has a very cute concept to it, but the way that it was executed, it was just like every line had some sort of trending buzzword in there and it was just a little bit trying too hard honestly i was so disappointed with this one because i was sure that i was going to love it but it just was not for me the writing was not really my style so i actually gave this one two stars next up i have my dark vanessa by kate elizabeth russell and this one took me quite a bit to finish just because the content is just it's heavy it's a lot there's a lot of like triggering things in this book so it's one that i just could not read straight through i'll give a trigger warning here and if you want to skip my description and review of this book i'll put where i stop talking about it here basically this book is about a 15 year old girl being groomed by her teacher her 40 something year old teacher and they end up having this love affair for years and it's kind of on and off as she gets older but they are always in contact until she's like in her 30s she is carrying this man around with her and thinking that what happened to her at 15 is this great love story of sorts so when it comes out that this man is being accused of grooming other girls and assaulting other girls she is very anti like no that's not what happened to me he loved me we had this great love of course it's really hard to read this story is insanely complex and at times you want to be angry with the main character and just be like are you kidding but you can't because that is just that is how that cycle of abuse can deeply affect someone and i think on a much softer level a lot of women can relate to feeling like they caused certain forms of abuse to happen and they blame themselves for that and with that i mean like oh maybe if i wasn't by myself in that alleyway that night maybe that wouldn't have happened to me maybe if i wore jeans instead of that skirt maybe he wouldn't have approached me you know those sort of things this is obviously a lot heavier Anyways, what I thought was especially crazy is that this is actually the author's first novel and her writing was incredible. Like, I cannot believe this is her first book. Overall, I did end up giving this one four stars and although it is a tough read, I enjoyed it and I would recommend if you are interested in it to check it out. Moving on to Pamela Anderson's memoir, Love Pamela. This one I was really looking forward to. I have not watched pam and tommy mostly because she was like very against it and like that stuff makes me so angry i also have not yet watched her netflix documentary which i heard was phenomenal so i went in with the book first and i did get a signed edition which i'm very excited about so cool um apparently she did not have a ghostwriter this is all 100 percent her own which i thought was very impressive she talks extensively about all of the books that she's read and she's very interested in writing herself she's like so much more spiritual and like i don't know it was very cool to kind of get inside her mind a little bit more in this book she has a lot of her poetry like throughout here it's like little snippets of poetry on almost every page but i feel like a lot of the stuff in here was rushed or glossed over like it was just like a quick paragraph about these huge moments in her life just felt a little bit more watered down than what i was hoping it could be if you have read jessica simpson's memoir open book i found that that was a phenomenal memoir it tells you so much about her and her entire life story and the details that she goes into it's like obviously such a vulnerable place and nobody owes that to anyone but that is what i was kind of hoping for and anticipating with this one and so when it was just like i dated tommy lee it was good and then it was bad next topic it's just like, okay, girly, I know you have more to say. But as I said, the Netflix documentary 
is supposed to be really really amazing so i will definitely check that out and maybe that will fill in some of the gaps that this book skipped over <laughs> then we have things we do in the dark by jennifer hillier and this is actually the first book that i read this month and immediately five stars i loved this book it was just it was so fun there is a oh my gosh i don't even know where to begin with this book because there's just so much that goes on it starts off with the wife of a famous rich comedian heading off to jail because her husband was found dead and she was found covered in his blood but this book is kind of split into different parts so in part two it is a totally different scene not connected to what was going on with the murder at all it's tough to explain because if i were to kind of get into it it would give so much away but this was so much fun i love putting the pieces together and this was just such an interesting way to tell this story oh my gosh you guys the ending was a little bit rushed but the storytelling i just i was obsessed with speaking of a rushed ending this is the writing retreat by julia bartz and this was also a very fun read, extremely predictable, totally out of the realm of believability. It was absolutely absurd, honestly, but it was fun. It's just like a silly little thriller and I did enjoy reading it. I read it very quickly. Was the writing amazing? No. Were any of the characters in the story likable in the slightest? Not at all. <laughs> but I still had a lot of fun reading it and I gave this one three stars. <laughs> Next, I have Mame by Jessica George and this immediately another five stars. I have three five stars in this pile. I did not anticipate loving this book as much as I did, but oh my goodness, this is such a beautiful coming of age sort of story. She is really just figuring out who she is in her 20s she's dealing with a very sick family member as well as some other very distant family members she's trying to learn how to make friends and excel at her job and in her career and it is just such a fun sweet read and i really resonated with the main character and i just thought this was amazing because this is jessica george's first novel and the way that this wraps up in the end it was beautiful i could just smooch her this book was beautiful and if you are feeling a little lost in life right now honestly i really suggest picking this book up because it just made me feel so good and a little bit more whole after i finished this the next and last book that i have to share for the month of february is also my final five star read it was truly a good reading month overall this is what lies in the woods by kate alice marshall and this was such a fun thriller it was beautifully written the ending was just so chaotic and fast-paced and a little ridiculous but i loved it i love like the aspects of mythology in here and like this wildness that is inside little girls it's really what your imagination is like <laughs> when you are in your younger years so this was this was insane this was very fun they were 11 when they sent a killer to prison they were heroes but they were liars i highly recommend this book and that wraps up my february reads so this month i had 10 books and three five stars which is kind of amazing if you guys have read any of these please let me know your thoughts i'm always interested to see how everyone's opinions kind of differ with the same books but thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you again soon bye